Perhaps you've seen these crazy sonifications I've been doing of Pascal's Triangle. I call the series Hearing Pascal's Triangle, and it's all about the fractal patterns that emerge when you look at Pascal's Triangle under different modulos. Aside from their musical potential, I think it's really interesting how these fractal patterns emerge, so I thought I'd make a quick video explaining what the deal is with them. This all started when I was teaching a lesson, and my student and I were exploring patterns within Pascal's Triangle. Anyway, I had the idea to see if there was a pattern of odd and even numbers. So I went ahead and circled all of the odd numbers in one color, and even numbers in another color. And a few things jumped out at me right away. First of all, there were some rows that were all odd. Then there were other rows that were all even except for the outer ones. Finally, I noticed this inverted triangle shape that kept showing up. Clearly there was something here to investigate. Now of course, in Pascal's triangle, each number is the sum of the two numbers above it. So the first thing to consider is what happens to these sums for odd and even numbers. Well, whenever you have an odd number plus an odd number, you get an even number. And similarly, even plus even is even. You only get an odd number when you're adding an even and an odd number. A number being odd or even is the same as it being equal to 1 mod 2 or 0 mod 2. So I'm going to use that notation from here on out. Anyway, to understand how these fractal patterns arise, let's consider again the special case of a row of all ones, or all odd numbers. Well, since odd plus odd is even, the next row is going to be all evens, apart from the outer ones which form the backbone of Pascal's triangle. Here's the thing though, that block of even numbers will shrink by one in each successive row, because the outer ones and zeros will always combine to form one. This leads to the inverted triangle shape that we observed earlier. Armed with these observations, we're finally ready to explain where the fractal patterns are coming from. To start with, you can verify for yourself that the first four rows of Pascal's triangle mod 2 look like a border of ones with a zero in the middle. The next row then, as we've discussed already, will be all zeros except for the ones on the edges. Then, because of the pinching of the outer ones, this row of zeros is going to form an inverted triangle. And of course, because this is Pascal's triangle, we'll also have a backbone of ones on the edges. Now here's the crucial observation. Whatever shape we had up here leading to the row of all ones is going to have to be replicated exactly here and here, because they share the exact same backbone, and the way numbers add is deterministic. So this is where the self-similarity comes from. And notice, the bottom row is once again all ones, which means the next row will be all zeros with ones on the edges. And so the process begins again. The zeros converge to an inverted triangle, and then we end up with a backbone for two triangles which must look like the triangle on the top. With each new iteration, the triangular shapes become more and more nested, ultimately approaching a Sierpinski triangle. The modulo 2 case is by far the simplest, but we can see the same kind of process going on when we consider Pascal's triangle modulo 3. As before, the key moment is when you arrive at a row which is all zeros except for ones on the end. Like in the modulo 2 case, these ones serve as seeds for identical copies of what has come before. However, unlike in the modulo 2 case, we don't immediately arrive back at the all zero row. Instead, the backbones of ones join together to form a 2 in the middle, which spawns an inverted copy of the triangle on the top. As before, the ones serve as seeds for regular copies. And when these two regular copies come together with the inverted copy from the two, they finally cancel out to create a row of all zeros. And now the process can start all over again, with regular and inverted copies of everything that has come so far forming the building blocks of the next iteration. It's no longer a Sierpinski triangle, because each triangle has three smaller triangles inscribed in it instead of one. I couldn't find the name of this fractal, so if you know, tell us all in the comments. Anyway, I'm left with a few lingering questions. For example, if we look at modulos 2 and 3, we see that rows with all inner zeros occur on integer powers of the modulus. This pattern seems to continue for prime modulos, which, by the way, form similar patterns to one another. Why is this? Modulos that are powers of a prime number seem to have these zero rows at the same places as the underlying prime, but they become somehow more nested. And finally, composite modulos with different prime factors, like 6 and 10, are the most interesting and chaotic looking. But if we compare the patterns they create to those of their prime factors, we see that there's some sort of superposition going on. 
Anyway, if any of you have any insights into the deeper origins of these patterns, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Also, feel free to lambast me for the poor contrast of my color choices. By the way, if you want to hear the full versions of these sonifications, I'm linking this video to a playlist where I'll be gradually uploading them over the next few weeks. And I also wanted to mention that I created all the music for this in Python using Scamp, my libraries for computer-assisted music. I'm going to be teaching a seminar in a few weeks on composing mathematical music in Python, so please check that out if you're interested. And with that, I'll play you out with some Pascal's Triangle music.